Hello and welcome to Disney Movie Investigation. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the show. Each week we take a look at a movie that is featured on Disney+. Plus. This week we are going back to the world of Marvel as we take a look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, Black Widow. As Also stay tuned for our bonus story as we take a look at Give Kids the World Village in Kissimmee, Florida. And if you are enjoying these videos, please do hit that subscribe button. That way you will never miss any of our videos. But for now, sit back and enjoy this episode of Disney Movie Investigation. As I said, today we are covering Black Widow. But first I thought I would give a brief introduction to Black Widow in the world of Marvel Comics. So Black Widow, who is known as Natasha Romanoff, was created by Stan Lee, Don Rico, and Don Hack. And her first appearance was in Tales of Suspense, number 52, that premiered on April of 1964. Black Widow appeared as a Russian spy and was an antagonist to Iron Man, but she would later defect to the United States and become an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and later on a member of the Avengers. Black Widow made her cinematic film debut in Iron Man 2. Black Widow the movie was released on June 29th, 2021, and it was directed by Kate Shotland, and it was written by Eric Pierce, Pearson. The production company is Marvel Studios, and it had a budget of $200 million, and to date it has done a box office return of $219.7 million. In terms of the development, in February of 2004, Lionsgate had acquired the film rights to make a Black Widow movie. However, um, and they had announced that David Hayter was announced as both the writer and the director. In June 2006, however, Lionsgate dropped the project and the film rights reverted back to Marvel Studios. In January, 20, in January of 2009, while prepping Iron Man 2, Emily Blunt was the leading candidate for uh, Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. However, she had to draw, decline the role because she was busy filming Gulliver's Travels. Scarlett Johansson was given the role in March of 2009, and she is signed to appear as Black Widow in many of the, of the Marvel Cinematic Films. Many other directors have expressed an interest in making a Black Widow movie, and these include Josh Whedon and Neil, Neil Marshall. And in October of 2017, Johansson met with Marvel Studios President Kevin Feige to, to discuss the possibility of a solo movie. Johansson expressed that the movie should feature a strong female presence and that women should be supporting other women. The movie takes place after the events of Captain America Civil War and it was filmed in Norway and because of COVID-19, the film's premiere was delayed three different times. To help support the movie, a half-hour documentary called Moneymaker Beyond the Black Widow appeared on ESPN E60 series and this is a documentary that interviews uh, Scarlett Johansson's stunt double as appearing as the stunt, double, the stunt double for Black Widow. Promotional tie-ins were also present with Geico, Ziploc, BMW, and Amazon. So let's take a look at the cast. So we have Scarlett Johansson who reprises her role as Natasha Romanoff. We have Florence Pug, Pug who plays Yelan Boloff. David Harbour who plays Alexei Shakovkov, Shakovkova in The Red Guardian. Olga Krilenko, who plays Antonio, Antonia Drakoff, a.k.a. the Taskmaster. We have Ray Winstone, who plays Drakoff, And we have Rachel Weiss, who plays Melina Voskov. In terms of the plot, this is an action spy thriller where Black Widow Natasha Romanoff uh, confronts the darker parts of her ledger with a dangerous conspiracy to her, when her, to her past arises. Pursued by a force that will stop at nothing to bring her down, Natasha must deal with her history as a spy and a broken relationships left in her wake long before she became an Avenger. So would I recommend this movie? I think this movie is really good. I, I like how it's an origin story, but they also fill the gaps uh, with that was left with Captain America Civil War. I think Scarlett Johansson really carried the movie very well. And as well as an excellent performance from Florence, Pl from For Florence Pug. Um, I thought the combination of action scenes along with moments of comedy worked really well. Um, there's a particular funny scene where um, Florence Pug is kind of making fun of Scarlett Johansson about how she kind of does the signature pose for Black Widow. And I thought it was a very cute and funny scene. 
Um, this definitely movie le definitely leaves room for future stories with Black Widow and any of the characters. And I think this was a really strong start to phase four with the next one being Shang Chi. Uh, so let's now that we've talked about Black Widow, let's take a look at our bonus story. So give the give the kid give kids the world village. And this is a nonprofit resort in Kissimmee, Florida, for children with critical illnesses and their families. Families that visit the site must be referred by a wish-granting organization, such as the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So let's take a look a little bit about the history of Give Kids the World. So Give Kids the World was founded by Henry Landworth, who was a former Belgian Holocaust survivor, immigrating to the United States and studying hotel management. Landworth became passionate about helping six children fulfill their family vacations while managing a hotel in Orlando. Landworth would offer hotel accommodations of, to families of children who had critical Ill, illnesses to visit Walt Disney World and other nearby attractions. An incident unfortunately occurred where two children actually passed away before their trip because no hotel accommodations was available. So Landworth, in response, became interested in creating a facility where accommodations could be made with minimal wait lists. So in terms of the actual site, the village has a whimsical theme with and features 168 family villas. Other features of the site includes a gingerbread house restaurant, the Castle of Miracles, Enchanted Carousel, Julie's Safari Theater, Matthew's Boundless Playroom, and Henry's Starlight Scoops, which is an ice cream uh, quick service uh, restaurant. The facility is run by a small professional staff, along with thousands of volunteer supporters. Around 1,600 volunteer shifts are covered each week, and each year the village welcomes around 7,000 families. In terms of the program itself, the program welcomes any child between the ages of 3 to 18 who has been diagnosed with a critical illness. One of over 250 wishing organizations would coordinate the transportation to Florida and then Give Kids the World would provide transportation from the airport to the resort along with meals for the week-long vacation as well as complimentary tickets to local theme parks including Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, and SeaWorld. The village is actually located in a central area so all of these uh, theme parks are within traveling distance. The child with the critical in illness is given a special badge with their name on it and this gives them special access to both theme parks as well as uh, quick, quicker and shorter lines to the theme park attractions. Both Boston Market and Perkins Restaurant and Bakery donates all of the food that is uh, needed to provide for the meals. And as well, Avis Rent-A-Car also provides complimentary rental car service to each family that visits the, the facility. During COVID-19, however, Give Kids the World was unable to grant any wishes. However, during the holiday season, the village was open for the first time to the public with a holiday event called A Night of Million Wishes, a um, Night of Million Lights, sorry. Three million holiday lights that were used from the previous attraction, Osborne Spectacular of Lights from Walt Disney World were donated and the villas were decorated by donations from corporate sponsors such as Crayola and Legoland Florida. I think this is a wonderful project. I think it's a great that gives a chance to kind of have a magical vac vacation, especially when they may not be able to either afford it or uh, there's medical concerns with the critical illnesses. So I think this is a great, uh, great opportunity. I've never seen it personally. Um, I was hoping to volunteer when I used to work at Walt Disney World, but unfortunately it just never came up. Uh, but again, I think it's a great, op a great facility and it's a great project and I really support it. So thank you so much for joining us this week on Disney Movie Investigation. Um, please leave a comment uh, below if you have seen the movie Black Widow yet and what do you think about it. Uh, please leave your kind of first impressions. Um, and as we look towards our next episode, we are going to continue to look at the movies under Disney Star. As we take a look at the sports comedy, uh, The Air Up There, starring Kevin Bacon. But until next time, we will see you real soon and I hope you have a magical day.